Hello everyone! Was that a satisfactory level of excitement by the way? It's just, well, I'm either ill or suffering from seasonal allergies. <clears throat> anyway, so KSP 1.2 is out and I'm guessing that many of you want to construct a half decent satellite network and so I present to you the official Matlown guide to establishing a triangular geostationary relay network around Kerbin. The title is uh, TBC at the moment. <laughs> Before this video really gets underway, however, I just wanted to showcase this somewhat unusual launch configuration I'm using here. I decided to take inspiration from the OSIRIS-REx launch, which used an Atlas V rocket with a single solitary solid rocket booster. Now you think this would cause the rocket to become horribly uncontrollable, especially in KSP, but by using a stock solution of five vector engines built around an adapter part, I was able to maintain stability quite easily. The vector engines are great because they have an enormous gimbal range, allowing them to angle themselves sufficiently to overcome the asymmetrical thrust of the rocket, and that's how, as you can see, it's now detached, and this rocket is remaining completely stable, no problems whatsoever. Now, I thought this was a really cool and unique thing to showcase in KSP, although following the recording of this video, I realised that Scott Manley has actually already done this, uh, albeit using tweak scale and procedural parts, so... Um, whatever, let's all just move swiftly away from the rocket and talk about the fairings. Uh, or rather, what lies within those fairings. Uh, you'll see for yourself soon enough, but the objective of this mission is to establish a network of geostationary relays. Now, since there are multiple tracking stations on Kerbin, geostationary orbit isn't really essential, but it's still a cool thing to do. It's also extremely easy, despite the fact that apparently many players are quite intimidated by the idea of it and a bit too sort of scared to try and attempt something like this. Um, and I mean, it does require finite tweaking of apoapsis and periapsis altitudes, but I'm going to show you how to do it. It's really easy, so yes. Now at this point, some of you may be wondering, Matt, you brilliant spacefaring wonder wizard, what exactly is stationary orbit? Well, a geostationary orbit is an orbit height at which the vessel has no motion relative to the body's surface. So for Kerbin, this requires putting a satellite in orbit that takes six hours to complete, which is the same length as one Kerbin day. In the real world, communication satellites in stationary orbit are really useful because any ground-based antennae don't need to move to account for the satellite's motion relative to the orbited body. This doesn't really matter for KSP because it's a game, but it is something that's cool to do again, so. And there we are, there is the payload. So I've kind of constructed this sort of scaffolding thing out of girders and octagonal structs. Structs? Struts? <coughs> in order to keep these things uh, safe in the fairing. That's pretty much it actually, but there you go, that's the uh, payload and that's how it is built. Uh, you can download this rocket in the description if you choose to. So we begin by setting our apoapsis to the correct height needed for synchronous orbit, which for Kerbin is 2,863,334 meters. This and the heights for other celestial bodies can be attained on the KSB wiki. Anyway, while we're going to set our apoapsis for this height, we actually want our periapsis to be slightly below this, putting our spacecraft in an approximately 4 hour orbit. Then each time we pass our apoapsis, we can deploy one of our three satellites and accelerate it up to speed, which is roughly 1,009 meters per second. This will result in our satellites being evenly spread around Kerbin, separated by around 120 degrees, because the internal angles of a triangle add up to 180, so the external angles are 120. You know this! <laughs> Now, at the time of recording this, Kerbal Engineer Redux, and indeed any of the other mods that I usually use, uh, it doesn't work for KSP 1.2, so I had to basically go back into the old version of KSP, the latest one supported by Kerbal Engineer, and apply these uh, the, the figures I got to KSP 1.2. Uh, anyway, the values I used on screen na are on screen now. Um, again, in KSP, it's not critically important to achieve a perfectly synchronous orbit. Again, since there are multiple tracking stations on the planet itself and the position of kind of antenna antenna positions and dish positions, it doesn't really matter in this game. So, like I say, it's not essential to get a completely perfect geostationary orbit if you're attempting this yourself. Uh, but it is just something nice if you want to add a bit of realism to your space program or you just want to achieve something cool. <laughs> One thing to note when deploying satellites is that it may take a little bit, a little while to get their orbits perfectly circular and at the right altitude. It eventually took me a lot of fine tuning and adjustment to get it dead on. Well, I think in the end I had a, a three meter disparity between apoapsis and periapsis. And when we're talking about kind of terms of millions of meters and things, I think that's pretty good. 
Uh, anyway, during your initial launch, it's more important to get the orbit just roughly circular and roughly at the right heights, and then to get right back to the mothership. And this is because it's crucial that we deploy each satellite every time the mothership passes over its apoapsis without missing an orbit. Uh, this is just to ensure that we end up with the correct separation between each vessel. I should just state here that the relay satellites that you're seeing in this video, like the one I just showed off there, uh, are complete overkill, and that's because I'm playing in my science sandbox save where funds are not an issue. If you're playing in career mode, you definitely don't need five antennas and four thermoelectric generators and all those batteries and solar panels. In reality, you only need just the one dish and a few, maybe like two solar panels and a battery. Um, and that will be sufficient. But like I say, this is my personal sandbox save and sometimes it's nice to make the satellites look cool even if it does mean they're ludicrously overkill for their intended purpose. You know, sometimes you like to put a little bit of form over function. You actually see here me deploying the uh, separation system I've incorporated into this booster so we can uh, get that sort of scaffolding clear of the satellite before it begins its acceleration phase. So, um, yes. <laughs> I feel like there's not a lot uh, more for me to add to this video in terms of kind of instruction. You can, I'm kind of going to let the video uh, speak for itself in terms of what you're going to do. So as soon as you get to uh, apoapsis, there we're going to start our burn, and we're going to bring up our periapsis until we're getting a roughly circular orbit. You'll know when it's circular because you'll suddenly see the apoapsis and periapsis uh, suddenly switch sides, and then we can kind of just tweak our apoapsis and periapsis. Um, apoapsis and periapsis height as we go around but it's essential that as soon as the mothership gets to its apoapsis we switch back to it and deploy the last satellite but you can see here already we're kind of getting a virtually triangular orbit here or triangular sort of shape <laughs> uh, in terms of the connections between the satellites so yeah it's going well it's going well so now actually we've deployed the last satellite I actually put a probe core on this uh, sort of lifting booster here so we can just deorbit it now and get rid of it I mean Kessler syndrome is not really a thing in Kerbal Space Program because you can just terminate it in the tracking center and that does delete the ship it's not like it's just going to be stuck up there forever without being able to be tracked but you know like I say we don't need to do a geostationary orbit either but it's sometimes nice to try and emulate sort of real world problems and kind of strategies as much as possible if you want I mean you know you might choose not to do this but who, who knows I mean I'll personally be uh, playing with the game set to uh, have all probes uncontrollable unless they're directly connected to the space center which I think is kind of the com net in hard mode but it's just it's just what I enjoy <laughs> one good thing to do after you've uh, implemented this kind of network of relays uh, is to employ a similar one around the Mun and Minmus. Uh, so no matter whereabouts you are in the Kerbin system, you'll always be able to remain in contact with Kerbin. Uh, unfortunately, geostationary orbit isn't possible on the Mun as the altitude required lies beyond its sphere of influence. Uh, it is possible to do on a Minmus, however, and an orbit of around 357.94 kilometers will do the job nicely. Uh, other bodies where you can't do this are Moho, Ike, Leith, Val, Tylo, Bop and Pol, uh, because again, a geostationary orbit is beyond their sphere of influence. While it's technically possible to do it on Juna, Ike will make any attempt somewhat tricky to establish as Ike is pretty much in geostationary orbit around Juna, uh, and so it will basically clear the orbit very quickly of any satellites, because although it's virtually stable, um, it's not quite in geostationary orbit, it's, slight, it's orbit is slightly eccentric and slightly inclined. Uh, this would mean that any, if a network to be established there, eventually Ike would just smash into all the vessels or just sort of provide a gravity assist for them to either send them straight into Juna or just in another orbit that isn't geostationary, basically. Yeah, in terms of establishing a geostationary orbit around Kerbin, that pretty much wraps up this video. Uh, I hope it was informative. And there, yeah, that's it. Like I say, not essential, but it's just something that's cool. And I think a lot of players uh, would want to do this, so... And if you want more tutorials like this or tutorials in general, just uh, let me know down below. Or if there is any topic you want me to cover, just uh, leave a suggestion. And yeah, that's it. I need to find a better way of ending videos than just, you know, cutting it to black.